Have you seen videos across YouTube and other social media sites talking about the end of SEO and the rise of GEO in 2024? Well, in this video, I'm going to be talking about the truth of these claims. First, what exactly is GEO or Generative Engine Optimization? Let's start with how AI has impacted search engines by first looking at Google, the world's largest search engine that has 92% market share, according to StatCounter. Over the last nine years, Google has introduced four critical upgrades to the back-end systems of its ranking algorithm. In 2015, Google introduced RankBrain. This helped its algorithm understand how words in search queries related to real-world concepts. As an example, if someone searches for Chrome, RankBrain allows Google to show results for Google Chrome, Chromebook, and Chromecast, thus interpreting what the user wants without the users having to be specific. RankBrain was further enhanced in 2018 with the Neural Matching Update. This provided the ability for Google to understand broader concepts in search queries. In the same year, Google launched SpamBrain, which is an AI system geared at weeding out low-quality content from the index. Google's algorithm saw a further technological enhancement with what is known as Google Mum Multitask Unified Model in 2021. This allowed Google to interpret images and even show listings from other language indexes by translating it if Google determined it was the best result for the user search query. Moving away from Google for a moment, Bing introduced an AI chat interface as part of its search experience in 2023 made possible through its partnership with OpenAI. This gives users the ability to ask real-life tasks in the search box such as create me a vegan shopping list for two weeks. The initial buzz around Bing's AI interface is what led Google to start talking about its AI search experience, known as SGE, or Search Generative Experience, and ultimately, the whole craze of GEO. Generative search optimization is all about understanding how search results are displayed in the search engine results pages. Advocates of GEO have stated that traditional methods of SEO will no longer work in 2024 or beyond, and that content optimizers now have to start incorporating methods that include using citations, quantitative data, brand mentions, providing quotations from reliable sources, unique writing style, and more. Let's look at some of these differences that are being highlighted. GEO concentrates on content quality, relevance, and directly answering queries for AI-driven generative search engines. SEO targets keyword density, backlinks, and meta information to improve rankings on traditional search engines. Is this actually true in a world where Google's search engine dominates and in which most SEO professionals work to optimize on Google? I beg to differ. Here are some of the key points from Google's search guidelines. Keyword density and meta information is an age-old tactic. Google does not even consider meta keywords anymore. It may be a factor in other search engines, but not Google, the dominant search engine. Google emphasizes the need to create quality content, and this is absolutely what SEO professionals advocate. In regards to direct answers, Google is presently able to do this through featured snippets, so it's nothing new. The keyword strategy difference, GEO, focuses on leveraging NLP, natural language processing, to understand query context, reducing the emphasis on specific keywords. Google already does this and SEO pros know that and advise not to keyword stuff and know that context can allow a page to show up even without the keyword being mentioned. That was made possible by Rank Brain. So now we know that differences being touted are not significant from the perspective of SEO on Google, which is the focus of this video. The big question in all of this is what should you actually be doing? AI overviews is a fast evolving space so you need to keep your student hats on and continuously follow developments. But as it stands, here is what industry experts are advising. On, track search volumes for, for search terms that show AI overviews. Identifying search terms that trigger AI overviews can uncover gaps in your content and provide optimization opportunities. Tracking search volume for these search terms allows you to prioritize your efforts, which Google already enhances with AI results. Two, technical SEO. Google's AI models still need to crawl a website's content, so making sure your website is technically sound for Google to be able to render the pages is paramount for them to be able to show up in AI overviews. Three, structure content in question and answer format. 
This advice has been around for a few years to show up for queries that show FAQ content but is more evident now with AI overviews. However, it can also be contentious as structuring your content in this format may not be lined with your company's branding. 4. Pursue featured status on highly authoritative Q&A websites. Websites like Reddit and Quora are being used as sources of information for Google's AI models. Having your content or opinion featured highly on these sites can improve your ability to show up on AI overviews. There's no doubt that AI overviews is a game changer, even from the point of view that organic listings as they currently are will be less visible.